Have you ever wanted to get instant updates as soon as an important email is sent or received? Or get notified the moment a link was clicked in your email campaign? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna to cover today. Welcome everybody to the next video in our email series for Azure Communication Services. We're going to cover setting up an Azure Event Grid Viewer so you can stay up to date with your email notifications in real time. Let's jump into the portal. Here in the portal, you can see I have a few resources already created. I'm going to jump into my communication service and I'll navigate to the events button. Now, I don't have any event subscriptions yet, but we're in the events homepage, which is going to help us build automation into our cloud infrastructure. There are a lot of different reactive event-driven apps that we can build. We're just gonna build a basic web app called the Azure Event Grid Viewer, and we're gonna send email related events directly to that. So before we create an event subscription, we have to actually deploy and build that web app so we have a place to send these events. Thankfully, there's a repo that exists for this that allows you to deploy the resources necessary in just a few clicks. I'll share that link in the description below, but here's the repo that deploys the resources you need, the Azure Event Grid Viewer. I'll scroll down and I'll click this Deploy to Azure button. This brings me to a custom deployment page where I just have to enter my resource group and some other information and it'll kick off the deployment of all the resources I need to have an Azure Event Grid Viewer. So let's select our resource group and then site name, this is going to be the actual URL for the web app that events get deployed to. So I'll call this view email demo. That'll be my site name, hosting plan. I'll just call it demo. And then I'll leave these the same. And I'll click review and create. Once it's validated, just click create. And this begins that deployment of the different resources I need. Once the deployment is complete, we'll have three resources. We'll have our server farms, which is a collection of VMs to help host our web apps. We'll have the actual site, the web app itself, and you can see this is that URL we entered. And then we'll have our source controls, which is just a series of configurations for our resource group. Let's check out the website itself. So this is information on the resource, and under default domain, it actually gives us the URL of the web app. So I'm gonna open this in a new tab, and I'll navigate to that page. This is what it looks like before any events get published to it. But in just a few clicks, we have a web app that we can send our events to. We're going to copy this URL because we're going to use this to send updates via a webhook. Part of the deployment process was setting up this Azure Event Grid Viewer with an endpoint that can receive updates. Now let's go back to our communication resource. And with a place set up to send events to, let's set up our event subscription so that we have automatic triggers that send the events there. So we'll click Event Subscription Again, we're under the events page and we'll click event subscription. To get started, we'll just name it. I'll call it email events. We'll use the event grid schema. And now I wanna filter which event types to send to my event grid viewer. So I'm gonna click this drop down. I'll search for email and I'll click email engagement tracking and email delivery report. Next, let's set these up to send via a webhook. We'll configure an endpoint. And the nice thing about deploying those resources the way we did is the web app has an endpoint, like we said, and that is gonna be API or slash API slash updates. All event grid viewers deployed this way will have this endpoint that's ready to receive events. I'll confirm selection, and then come back down here and click create. Once that's done deploying, we'll have everything in place. We'll have an event subscription for a communication resource, so all email related events will be captured, and that will trigger an automatic send of that event information to our Azure event grid viewer. If I change the time range here, we can see that I already have events for this email resource. I'll navigate to the Azure Event Grid Viewer and we'll see that we have our first event, which just says that the subscription validation event took place. And if I unfurl it, you can see more information in JSON about the event itself. In this case, it was a subscription validation event. Now let's send some emails and see this in action. I'll reconfigure my screen so we can see it all happen live. Now I have a setup where I'm going to send emails from the Try Email Blade in the portal I'm going to see those emails appear in my inbox, and then I'll see the events pop up in the Azure Event Grid Viewer. I'll collapse this so I have some more room, and let's go ahead and we're gonna send an email from Do Not Reply to this demo inbox. I'll click Send. It gets sent, I see it in my inbox, and then we'll see an event pop up that tells me that the email was delivered. And here's that event, email delivery report received. Let's unfurl it and see the JSON information. So I'll scroll down, and we can see the different information that comes back in the event. 
So I can see a subject which has a specific correlation ID for this email. Under data, I see a bunch more information about who the sender was, who the recipient was, uh, the status of it. I can see a timestamp for when it was delivered and so forth. Let's scroll back up and close this. And now let's open the email and we'll see another event get triggered. So now I have an email engagement tracking report. Let's unfurl this and I'll scroll down. It's gonna have similar information, but the new thing here is that we have an engagement type of view. This message ID, this correlation ID is specific to this email. So if this email went out to a bunch of people, I'll have the same message ID and I can use this to get information. Next, let's go ahead and click one of the links in the email. So I'll click, go to the Microsoft homepage. It opens up a new tab and we get another event. If I unfurl this and scroll down, now you can see I have an engagement type of click and it'll tell me what exactly was clicked in the engagement context. So in this case, it was the Microsoft homepage link. Let's close this again. And now we'll click the other link, go to the Copilot homepage. We get another event. And if I unfurl it, we'll see that we have an engagement type of click. And now the engagement context was that different link. It was the Microsoft Copilot page. And you'll get an event for every time an email was clicked. So let's close this and keep clicking links and we'll get an event each time. So we can see how often a link was clicked in our email campaign. So we've created an Azure Event Grid viewer that sends all the information, all the events related to the email events. Now let's say I didn't want every single event that took place to get sent to my Azure Event Grid viewer. I wanna filter it a little bit so I'm only getting, let's say, clicked emails or clicked events sent to the, to the viewer. I can do this by setting up filters. So let's go back to my event subscription. So I'm in events, I'll click the event subscription that I set up and I'll come here to the filters tab. I'll scroll down a bit. Let's say we wanna add a new filter. In this case, let's look at the event data. So I'll scroll down and I only want engagement types of click. So the, the key here is going to be data and then I'll dot into the next key of engagement type and we'll say that we want it to contain click. So let's save this. And now we'll send a new email and we'll watch how we don't get events pop up in the event grid viewer until I click something. So let's send another email. Let's call it, this has email two. So I get the email. Notice I did not get any event that it was delivered. Even when I open it, I'm still not gonna see any events because it's only filtering now for events where it's clicked. And if I were to click a link, then we'll see an event trigger in the Azure Event Grid Viewer. And that's exactly what happened. Now this is just a basic filtering method, but we can also see if I wanted to add a ton of new filters, I can add as many filters as I want, and I can also set up as many Event Grid Viewers as I want. So if I look at the information in the JSON, you can come up with some pretty advanced filtering workflows. Let's say I sent out a large email request to a lot of different recipients. They'll all have the same message ID or what we call the correlation ID. And you can use that to create a filter for each one of your email campaigns. For example, you could set up data dot message ID, have shrink contains, and then add the correlation ID specific to that email campaign. Because everything with the same correlation ID is related to the same email request, which can have multiple recipients. Now, this is just one way. This is a basic example of how you can be notified or stay up to date when important email events get triggered in your workflow. I just had the events published in an Azure Event Grid viewer, but you can trigger any sort of automation that makes sense in your workflow. You can set up as many subscriptions as you like and filter them as granularly as you need for your use case. You can also trigger different automations to take place when an event occurs. For example, you could send notifications to a Teams channel when an email was clicked, trigger a function in Azure Functions, integrate with Power Automate, and the list goes on and on. There really are endless possibilities with Azure Event Grid. Just tailor the notifications and automations to fit your use case. And that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful. See you in the next one. See ya.